Hey everybody, Eric here. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I hope you're going all right. In today's video, we are talking about what could be the hottest turn-based game of 2023, that's Sea of Stars. There's been a lot of hype generated about this game. I finished Sea of Stars a couple of days ago. I've had enough time to sit and compile my thoughts in a spoiler-free way and just kind of give you guys uh, a summary of what maybe to expect if you haven't played the game yet. And if you have played the game, I'd be interested to know if you agree or disagree with some of my opinions here. So uh, without further ado, letting you guys know I played this game on my Steam Deck, ran really well. I assume that it's going to be pretty well optimized regardless of what platform you're playing on. So let's get to the review. Developed by Sabotage Studio, funded via Kickstarter and released August 29th, 2023, Sea of Stars is a turn-based RPG that's unashamedly inspired by some of the greatest games of all time. But is it more than that? The game starts off with two up-and-coming solstice warriors, Zale and Valerie, training to cleanse the world of dwellers, which exist purely to destroy the world and are part of the evil Fleshmancer's plan, again, for destroying the universe and all that kind of stuff. I'm not saying any more to avoid spoilers, and I won't comment on the plot more than this, but essentially bad guys are bad and good guys are good. Go beat the bad guys up as the good guys. You know how it is. There's lots of characters you meet along the way, plenty of charming dialogue to keep you entertained, and of course this is all driven by a beautiful pixel aesthetic that Sea of Stars has to offer. The art direction in this game is really sublime, so even if you're not a fan of the older games, it's really hard to not appreciate the time and effort put into the visuals of this game. I will say that I felt I wanted more of like a bright and sunny and like lush green areas to the game, but at the same time it's probably fitting considering the premise. Regardless of that, even towards the end of the game, the sense of immersion is really driven by the visuals. If you've played that far or even beaten the game, chances are you know what I'm referring to. Sea of Stars also offers the occasional animated cutscene, which was a really welcome surprise and greatly complemented any scene you would find them in. The battle system is an easy concept to grasp. It's very similar to the Mario and Luigi style games with timed hits for blocks and attacks. Can also, depending on the abilities of the character, for example, Zale is Sun, Valerie is Luna, Garl is physical with like the hammer icon, you get the idea. You can either stop an enemy turn or decrease the power of a pending attack. The one problem I found is that oftentimes there aren't enough turns to actually do that, but in the grand scheme of things, it's pretty insignificant because the game is overall pretty fair in terms of difficulty. I only once got a game over very early on thanks to some enemies that kept spawning allies, but beyond that it was very easy more or less, even without the ability charms that give you kind of like the story mode experience. Being able to swap characters mid-fight is also really handy in the event of being down on healing items or wanting to use a combo attack with somebody who isn't currently present in the fight. There's a lot of inspired by things like the Sunball attack being a callback to the Geno Beam from Super Mario RPG. As I mentioned before, the timed blocks and hits from the Mario and Luigi games, the list goes on. Again, it's a game that is really well aware of its influences and draws on them and essentially kind of wears them proudly. In basic terms, the combat overall was fairly straightforward and not really much of a challenge, even towards the latter end of the game. Combos that build up over time are cool to see, especially depending on what pair of characters you decide to use, and you can certainly use this to your advantage if you can find the enemy's vulnerability, especially if you decide to boost your attacks with the little orbs that scatter on the battlefield when you hit enemies. You do eventually get ultimate attacks for each character, which of course do max damage, so it's a good incentive to build up your combos by timing hits and blocking and also using your skills effectively. Now the level up system in my opinion was a little bit undercooked. Similar to like Mario RPG, when you finish a battle and then you level up, you go to this extra screen where you can select a specific stat boost. The Sea of Stars example, you can do physical defense, HP, attack power, mana points, which are like your magic points and so on and so forth. I feel like doing that doesn't really add a whole lot because you already level up specific stat points, you know, as you grow. So I don't know, I feel like it really didn't have that much of an impact, but of course, if you wanted to go for health points the entire playthrough and, and stack up HP for your characters, you can do that. But again, I really don't feel like it had that much of an impact. The pacing of levels and new equipment felt about right. Every new area you find has a new equipment store or the equivalent to upgrade. You always seem to have enough money as well, even if you need to sell off some stuff. So there's no need to grind 
either because the battles are predetermined similar to Chrono Trigger style where enemies are always present on screen. Some battles you can avoid, but honestly you're better off just taking the extra minute to fight them for the EXP or the cash reward at the end. Now I will say the puzzles in this game were a welcome change considering I've literally just come off playing Final Fantasy Pixel Collection 1 through 6, so having to use a little bit more brain power to get through some levels was, was really nice honestly and kind of reminded me of Golden Sun puzzles, which are really fun, and especially I love Golden Sun. I'm a huge fan of that series. So seeing something similar, I mean, I don't even know if it's inspired by, but having some extra means of traversal kind of made me use my noodle a little bit more. I liked that, it was fun. Some of the puzzles could have benefited from being a little bit more difficult, especially in the later um, stages of the game. Some of them were just kind of very simple. I would have expected maybe a little bit more difficult puzzles than just pushing a few blocks or flipping some cards and matching them. That's just me soundtrack wise which was my favorite part of the game hands down it's pretty well flawless there's two composers handling the tracks in sea of stars eric brown as the main composer and guest composer yasunori matsuda most known for chrono trigger chrono cross xeno gears and xenoblade chronicles the list goes on absolutely amazing brown's tracks are simply stand out well composed well mixed and perfectly suited to every bit of the world you would traverse. Now Mitsuda's tracks are obvious when you hear them, especially if you have a keen ear and are familiar with his previous works. My favorite was the song from Coral Cascade, very reminiscent of the Super Nintendo days. I also wanted to note that I think a lot of people would assume that having a guest composer with the, the name Yasunori Matsuda would kind of outweigh and overshadow Eric Brown's involvement as the composer for Sea of Stars, but it absolutely does not do that. Honestly, Eric Brown's work is very, very well done, really well done, and shouldn't be overshadowed by Yasunori Mitsuda's involvement. In fact, they complement each other quite well, to the point that if you don't know that there is a guest composer, you would assume that one person just compiled all these songs because they're blended pretty well, and pretty much, I think, sharing the same sample libraries and stuff to make sure that all the sounds are consistent. So. Again, everything is really consistent, really well done, and uh, props to Eric Brown for doing a really, really great job on the soundtrack. Sea of Stars is linear for about 95% of the game until, of course, you unlock a better means of traversal than you can hit all of the extra places you've seen and unlock the doors that you couldn't open previously. By the time I got to that point, honestly, I couldn't be bothered. There are reasons why you should go for 100% completion, so if you haven't played yet, try and hunt down all those treasure chests and save you time later on. You'll see what I mean. But it's pretty much like, let's go save the world and fight the bad guy and, and destroy all the evils. Or we can actually wait and backtrack a bit to everything that's been interesting along the way that we couldn't interact with, get some of the game's best equipment, tidy up some loose ends. By that time, 20 plus hours in, I felt it was a too little too light scenario. I just wanted to go for the ending, so I did that instead initially. Now I've saved this talking point for last. <laughs> The story. I think, in my opinion, I feel that the story was the weakest point and it just never really hooked me like I was hoping it would. I don't want to say it was a bad story or a boring story because it wasn't by any means, but I never felt like it was totally inspired by the plot of the game. Sea of Stars did have a lot of cool moments, but there was never really a point where I truly felt locked in because the story plays it so safe for most of the game. Sea of Stars does have a few wow moments, but I always felt that they were quickly resolved or glossed over. Same thing with certain dialogue points where some characters would seem to know more than they let on, but you don't get any answers for a number of hours. I mean, I guess it's supposed to keep you interested, and I felt that when I did finally get the answers, again, they were just kind of glossed over. I mean, I am the target market for this game, but the entire time I was just waiting for it to hook me, and it never really did. Maybe the story could have used a touch more polish to tie it all together. That's just me. I don't know. It took at least like 15-ish hours for me to even find a point in the story where I kind of felt like I was loosely locked in. But again, it just never really landed for me. Overall, with the ending considered, Sea of Stars leaves little to be desired in my opinion. It's hard to put a score on this one, but what I can honestly say is that Sabotage Studio has absolutely done a fantastic job creating Sea of Stars. It's definitely not fair to compare this game to anything else just because it was hyped up to be an inspired by game because Sea of Stars excels at being a really cool modern take on a classic style of game that is definitely worth your time checking out even if you've never played a game like this before. Sea of Stars doesn't reinvent the wheel by any means. The gameplay loop is mostly the same by the end of the game as it was early on, and the story falls a bit short. But overall, I think it was a good experience that's worth seeing through till the end and beyond. I really think this is a case of mileage may vary kind of game, depending on how the story lands with you especially. 
So there you have it, Sea of Stars. Was it all it was hyped up to be? Well, I can confidently tell you that I went in with no expectations other than really loving the demo. I really enjoyed what I played there, but I found that once I finally got into the game, a lot of the characters and a lot of other things were kind of simply forgettable. And I don't mean that in a bad way at all. It just didn't land with me. And I find that out of anything, the, the pros that I can take away from my experience with Sea of Stars, visual aesthetic, it is a pixel perfect, beautiful game absolutely stunning in the visual department and the soundtrack that complements your gameplay is just as great and not only that of course i love the the tracks from guest composer yasunori mitsuda but eric brown's tracks are really really great and stand out and i really hope to get a copy of that on vinyl should sabotage studio ever bring that on wax as they say and if you have finished sea of stars i'd be really interested to know if you agree with me or disagree with me on some of my thoughts on the game and if you haven't played it again it's really worth your time checking out even if i didn't really love the story as much you might love it way more than i did and i suppose another food for thought question is if this game were released back in 1994 would it be a golden era turn-based rpg I don't know. You let me know. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up or a like. Comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on today's program and subscribe if you haven't done so already. That being said, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again on the next video. Take care.